Hello, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. Today I'm going to be making over this massive cedar chest that I found in the trash using a beginner friendly electric sprayer and some paint from Home Depot to get a super smooth professional looking finish. <music> Our town has had two bulky item trash pickup days since we moved here last spring, and I've been lucky enough to score some really great furniture pieces for free. This chest is one of them. I actually thought it was a dresser when I first spotted it, but nope, it's the biggest cedar chest that I have ever seen. The top of it is pretty beat up with a little goo on it, so I'm going to need to do some sanding here and fix this separated trim piece, but I think even with those chores, this should be a relatively simple upgrade. Once I get that stuff out of the way, I'm going to be using this Wagner paint sprayer from Home Depot and some of Bear's Alkyd enamel paint to give this a fresh new look and give some tips and tricks for anyone who is new to spraying paint on furniture and hopefully help your first few spraying projects go smoothly. My first step for any furniture flip, especially something like this that was in the garbage, is to give it a really good clean. I am using some Simple Green today to wash away any dust and dirt but more importantly to cut through any potential grease, oils, or wax buildup that could be on this surface from furniture polishes or even just handprints over the years. I'm also gonna pull these handles off. I think I'm going to replace these with something gold and maybe add knobs to the rest of these panels for just a more cohesive look. <laughs> up some of this all-purpose Bondo to fill in the old hardware holes on the bottom two panels and these spots of damaged veneer on the corners. This is a two-part filler where I have to mix the base putty with a cream hardener. I tucked a little piece of painter's tape on the inside of these holes and once the color of the Bondo is consistent I'll use my little popsicle stick to push all of that way down in there. Now that my piece has had a little bit of time to dry and the Bondo has cured up nice and hard, I'm going to sand. I need to get all of this failing finish off of the top and just scratch up the rest of the flat surfaces. So I'm using some 180 grit sandpaper. <laughs> A foam abrasive on my surf prep sander to help me get into and around all of these trim details and this is gonna just help me smooth out any surface scratches and also give my paint just a little bit of rough texture to grip onto. You definitely do not need a fancy sander to do this sanding. You can just get scuff sanding like this done pretty quickly and easily by hand. And once I got everything scuffed and scratched up, I just wiped away the sanding dust with a clean microfiber cloth. I'm gonna put a little bit of painter's tape also over any spots that I want to protect from getting painted. And the screws on this latch are totally stripped, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape over this as well. For anyone that's new to spraying, I would definitely recommend investing in a spray tent if you can. I don't use any kind of shield or barriers in my garage. I've always just dealt with the dusty mess that comes with spraying, but it is absolutely helpful to have a tent set up to contain any overspray. And it really just helps keep the dust and debris from your workspace from landing in your wet finish. You do need to have an outdoor-ish space, like a garage or a shed or on your driveway or your backyard to spray. You definitely don't want to be attempting this inside your home. 
One other super important thing that I wanna mention is that when you are spraying anything, you need to wear a respirator to protect your lungs. Spraying forces air through the paint to atomize it or turn it into a really fine mist, which can hang out in the air and you just don't wanna be breathing any of that in. I prefer to wear a respirator over a dust mask when I'm spraying anything because the filters on the respirator will also protect against any vapors or toxic odors that a lot of these paint products can have. A dust mask is only designed to filter particulates, not vapors or gases, so keep that in mind. So because this top is now down to bare wood, and I've got all of these mystery stains on it, I do wanna go ahead and add a layer of primer so that my finished paint will sit nice and evenly over this bare wood and then the rest of the surfaces that still have some of the original finish on it. And hopefully these marks on the top won't show through. I'm using this Rust-Oleum primer in gray just because it's quick and easy, but these are the primers that you'll usually see me using here on the channel. This Bin Shellac Base Primer used to be my go-to for sealing in stains, odors, porous spots, but it's gotten ridiculously expensive lately, so I haven't been using it as much. It's also highly flammable, so it cannot be sprayed in an electric sprayer like the one that I'm using today. It is a huge safety risk. Don't put this stuff in an electric sprayer. The other one that I've been using more and more is this Kills Restoration, which has the performance of a shellac or oil-based primer, but it's a water-based formula. This could be sprayed, but I prefer to roll it on since it's pretty thick and sticky. Okay, while my primer dries, let's take a look at this sprayer. This is the Wagner Flexio 3000. This sprayer comes in a kit with two nozzles. The larger one is great for big projects like walls or fencing, and the smaller nozzle is what I use for furniture. These sprayers are really easy to put together and take apart for cleaning, and just have really great, basic, easy to use settings. The motor attaches to the spray nozzle with a quick twist, and from there, it's pretty much plug and play. There are a few settings that you can use to help you get the finish that you need. The material flow dial here on the trigger that you turn to adjust how much paint is coming out. The X boost dial on the top adjusts the level of air pressure that the turbine is producing. So how much force the sprayer is using to push the paint out and the air cap. You just turn this to adjust your spray pattern. If it's horizontal, you'll get a vertical spray. And if it's vertical, you'll get a horizontal spray. Like I said, I'm using some paint right from Home Depot today. You'll see a lot of specialty boutique style furniture paints on my channel, and I do love them all. But this paint from Home Depot can be tinted to whatever color you want, and you're not limited to a specific color palette. It also comes in a few different sheens depending on what you want. And this particular paint is formulated specifically for furniture and cabinetry. So it cures up to a really hard, durable finish and it doesn't need any additional top coat. I had a quart of this mixed up in the color Midnight Blue, which is a really pretty dark kind of smoky blue. And I'm going to put it through a strainer into my gun so that I don't have any little crusty bits or paint boogers that might clog things up and mess up my flow. The directions on this paint specifically say not to thin it, and it is a lot thicker than I usually like to spray, but I think it'll be okay. If I was using one of the chalk or mineral paints that I like that are even thicker than this, I would just add a little bit of water until it was probably the thickness of like a heavy cream or buttermilk. I've got about half of the quart or 16 ounces, a pint, in here and that should be more than enough paint for a few coats on this chest so now i'm going to screw the cup onto the nozzle and i want this feed tube part to be pointing downwards towards the front of the nozzle so that it can pick up the paint from the front of the cup while i'm spraying in a slightly downwards angle now I just put the motor on with a twist and lock it in place. The cords on these Wagner sprayers are pretty short, so it's a good idea to have an extension cord. And now that I'm all plugged in, I just wanna test out my spray pattern on some cardboard. This is something that you'll wanna do every time you spray because the absolute worst thing is to point your sprayer at your furniture piece and have way too much paint come out. 
This is thick paint. So I ended up having to adjust the X boost dial all the way up to eight. And I have the trigger dial almost all the way open, but I usually spray around a level four with the trigger about halfway. You wanna keep your sprayer about eight to 10 inches away from your surface and start your spray just off the edge of your piece. Then you just slowly guide your spray across the surface, keeping the distance the same and your wrist locked in place. I like to overlap my passes by about 50%, so each stroke is just covering the bottom of the last one. Here's a better look at the spray of this gun. It's definitely not as fine of a mist as I get with my pneumatic sprayer, but it still gives a really nice smooth finish compared to brushing or rolling. And a lot of this orange peely bumpy texture will level out as the paint dries. needs four to six hours of dry time in between coats so I'm gonna leave this for the afternoon and when it's time for me to come back and apply the second coat I'll just go over all of the large surfaces with some 400 grit sandpaper super lightly just to knock off any high spots or little fluffy dusty bits that had landed in my first coat. If you leave your sprayer loaded up, you'll get a little scab or paint booger over the tip here. So I just pick that off and then I'm ready to go again. You can leave your sprayer loaded up in between coats. I wouldn't recommend leaving it overnight. If it's going to be that long in between your coats of paint, I would definitely take things apart and rinse out your gun. But for me, I didn't need to do that. I did a really quick test pull of the trigger down on my drop cloth and it was good to go. So I applied coat number two the same way. I do wanna say that when you're first getting used to spraying and really starting out anything new, you need to give yourself some grace. This does take some practice. You need to find your own flow and figure out what settings and positioning works best for you and your particular setup. You will also make mistakes. You will have instances where you're not putting on enough paint and it's drying with a really rough texture, or you'll apply way too much paint and it sags or drips. But at the end of the day, it's just paint. You can always sand it back and start over. So just be mindful of being easy with yourself. Cleaning up this sprayer is really simple. I just have a bucket of warm water here with a drop of Dawn dish soap in it, and I'm gonna break this thing down. I unplugged it and I'm gonna remove the motor. Then I just unscrew the cup and I can empty the rest of my paint. All of these pieces just need a rinse through with this mild soapy water. Then I can just lay everything out on a towel to dry. These new Ginkgo leaf drop pulls are from Amazon and I think they match really well with the handles that I salvaged from another trash find a few weeks ago. The color isn't quite the same, so I just gave them a really quick spray of this gold Rust-Oleum spray paint to make them match a little bit better. chest is going to be a nice addition to my living dining room and some good additional storage. 
it should be a great hiding spot for some of my off-season throw pillows and blankies. I really hope this video has given you a little bit more confidence and some helpful tips if you've been wanting to try spraying paint but you've been afraid to take the plunge. If you wanna see some more furniture projects using a Wagner sprayer like this one, check out this playlist, make sure you're subscribed, and I will catch you all next time.